Hi, my name is Lily Gutnick, and I'm here to talk to you about some of the new stuff in group policy. Previously, we've talked about all of the new cool stuff in Win7 for group policy, and we mentioned ADMX settings. Now, what am I talking about? ADMX is a class of setting that allows you to configure certain, certain uh, settings for all these different applications. We have over 3,000 settings total as part of the Win7 Server 2008 R2 release, 300 of which are new. And of those 300 new settings, 140 of them are actually all devoted to IE8. So for everybody out there configuring IE, you'll be happy to hear that all the new IE, IE8 features are uh, setting GP enabled. Other features that are enabled include things like BitLocker, AppLocker, advanced audit policy configuration, and, and other things like that. We also have some ADMX work that was changed on the group policy side, and Mike will be able to show you some of that, as well as some of the settings I'm talking about now. So as Lilia mentioned, we're going to talk a bit about some of the new stuff in Win7, in particular ADMX stuff. So we've done heaps of stuff in Win7 around some new settings around ADMX, and Lilia mentioned before we've added a number of new settings, but we've also done some other bits and pieces around ADMX as well. Now, it's, it's important to mention that ADMX targets the registry in particular. It's also important to mention that ADMX is not a fundamental change in the way we author policy. We still use GP Edit. It's just now we've got a new template format. In fact, this template format came in in Windows Vista and Server 2008. So we've really just incrementally added to that in Windows 7 and R2 as well. Um, so the good thing about it targeting the registry is we can actually make our own custom stuff. And it's a lot easier to make our own custom settings for policy settings that we might want to support with other custom applications um, using a new tool called ADMX Migrator. Okay, so one of the things we covered last time in, um, in our previous little webcast that, that Lilia and I did was the ADMX UI. And so we covered before that, you know, that we've got now everything integrated into the one single UI. Whereas before you saw a lot of tabs and you had to move from tab to tab to tab, this is a much cleaner interface that you see now it, with everything at a glance. So we can see instantly whether it's not configured, enabled or disabled. We've got all our commenting in full view. We can see exactly what platforms this particular policy setting is supported on. Um, we can move to the next setting in our policy list if we want to. If there are any options associated with switching on, um, say for example enabled, we can see those options. The great thing is help is now integrated. So at a glance I can see exactly what this policy is doing, anything relevant to my organization, what it's targeting and what state the policy is actually in. And in some cases some of the policies have quite a bit of help. So we can now actually stretch the interface and move it around whereas before we couldn't actually do anything like that. So we can stretch it as needed um, to our particular environment. So I mentioned before that we can now have a way of editing these things as well. So we've got a whole bunch of settings here in Windows Components. Perhaps we want to add our own custom settings. So there's this tool called ADMX Migrator. And I've taken the liberty of just loading our ADMX for ActiveX Installer Service. And you can see that the UI here is quite straightforward. Um, we've got the settings as part of this ADMX is approve installation uh, sites for ActiveX controls. We can see it's a machine class. We can see the display name of what that um, option is going to be, what the registry key it's targeting, what the registry value name is, what the class is, and what the actual ID is. So everything is you know, very much what you'd expect to see in the registry. We can even take ADMs that we've got in our environment as well, perhaps custom ADMs that you might have created previous uh, for Windows XP, and we can generate an ADMX template out of that ADM file. Now the good thing is once we take it to ADMX, it's all in XML, it's very easy to manipulate, read, and we get language independence. So if I move into the central, into the, the local store of this machine, you can see under Windows policy definitions, this is where all the ADMXs are stored. This is the same as what it was in Vista and Server 2008 when we introduced this. So you can see the ADMX is all about the settings, whereas the language files, say for example ENUS, if I go into there, these are the language files for things like you know, all the text and display strings that we would expect to see. So the great story here is we get language independence. And you can see I've got all the languages here, German, English, Spanish, French, Italian, Japanese, so on, so on, so on. Um, so now we can actually author our own ADMXs really easy to support you know, custom registry settings you might want to push out in your environment with policy.